Coming up on Citrus TV News, the Nunez memo is out. We have the details on what it says and the potential impact it may have. And crowds gathered in Pennsylvania today to hear from the one and only Puxatawney Phil. Find out whether the groundhog thinks brutal winter is here to stay. And Citrus TV reporter Elijah Shama is in Jordan with details on one of the only bars in the country that will be broadcasting the Super Bowl. Citrus TV News starts right now. This is Citrus TV News Live at 6, your campus news leader. And Syracuse is under a winter weather advisory until 7 a.m. tomorrow morning. Good evening, I'm Nicole Dementry. And I'm Noah Eagle. Campus received over four inches of snow today, but the big story, the frigid wind chills that reached double digits below zero. Citrus TV weather anchor Josh Feinblatt joins us in studio with the latest on this dangerous weather. Yeah, guys, it was cold outside. Temperatures got to feeling like negative three with that wind chill. It was actually about 12 degrees around uh, uh, throughout the day, got up to around 15. Right now, it's about 12 degrees, but that slushy conditions is what we all are worried about. I was slipping and sliding around. I know you guys were as well. Uh, really, uh, because it, there was a little bit of snow, and the wind just f f going all around. We all had to get to classes. All the sorority recruitment has started. It made for a lot of slushy conditions. But tonight, it's also going to not feel uh, too, too different. Around, around 11 degrees. It's going to feel like negative two going into the night. We have a 15% chance of snow. So uh, it, it's gone a little bit down the percent chance of snow throughout the day with that winter weather advisory. But Look for a lot of snow at least going flying around through the air with that wind flying off of buildings. They're trying to clear it outside as much as possible. Thanks, Josh. And it's unfortunate to hear that. And it's unfortunate that the groundhog has spoken and he says we're going to have another six weeks of winter. Pennsylvania's Punxsutawney Phil crawled out of his hole and saw the shadow today. The 132 year old tradition is held every year in Gobbler's Knob, Pennsylvania. Now, Phil may be the most recognizable groundhog, but dozens of states carry out the tradition with their own groundhogs across the United States. Well, Ready, Set, Recycle, the 2018 Recycle Mania Tournament kicks off this Sunday, and SU is participating. Recycle Mania is an eight-week competition featuring colleges from the U.S. and Canada. SU will be competing in divisions that measure weight of total recycled goods, food organics, and more. On Valentine's Day, Sustainability Management will host the Spin the Wheel Tile game that will test the players' recycling knowledge in the Shine Student Center. SU is turning 150 years old in 2020, and a book is commissioned to celebrate the occasion. Forever Orange, the story of Syracuse University, will be composed by alumni Scott Petoniak and Rick Burton, and will feature essays from other alumni. The book is designed to celebrate SU's history through firsthand accounts from people that went here, and the authors are encouraging alumni to contribute their memories of Syracuse University. And there's basketball tonight in the Dome, but there won't be any orange jerseys on the court. Now the Harlem Globetrotters are returning to the Carrier Dome to tip off against the Washington Generals at 7 p.m. The two teams have played each other in a touring series for nearly 90 years. And fans can take pictures and get autographs with the Globetrotters after the game. Tickets are still on sale. And Syracuse University is known for its architecture program. Citrus TV reporter Greg Badberry is live in studio to tell us how one professor is finishing up his time here at SEO. Well, architecture professor Randall Corman is in his final semester here at Syracuse after 41 years with the university. He's been a part of many beneficial programs and is not finished just yet. Over Professor Corman's time here, he has filled just about every position in the school. Of his many accomplishments, he's most proud about the Italian Foreign Studies program he set up and had this to say about it. And seeing the students coming back from Florence, you know, and asking them how was it, and they just say, without a, you know, without exception, they would, it's almost impossible to find a student that would tell you they didn't have a good time, a good experience on one of those programs. Many architecture students across the country don't ever have the chance to go abroad and look at the buildings they've seen in textbooks. However, Professor Corman wanted to make sure they are taking in what they were learning about. There is no substitute for direct experience. I can show thousands of slides of the greatest buildings in the world. I can give all sorts of lectures about why these things are important and the lessons that you can learn from them. At the end of the day, there's no substitute 
for standing, for instance, in the middle of the space of the Pantheon in Rome and experiencing that firsthand. As a parting gift to the university, he decided to put together a six-part lecture series on facades, with many renowned architects coming to lecture here at Syracuse. Fourth-year student Mike Liu had this to say about the series. I think it's, I like, I think it's a wonderful thing uh, that we have as a resource, and um, you know, it says a lot about him as a person and a professor to be able to um, give that to the student body. Um, and also the other professors, everyone here that's involved or wants to engage with uh, his ideas in architecture. The lecture series kicked off on Tuesday and continues through April 10th. You can find the full schedule of speakers on the Syracuse Architectures website. Thanks so much, Greg, and it may be easier to go west in the coming months. Syracuse Airport officials filed for a $400,000 federal grant to encourage United Airlines to set up a non-stop route to Denver. The route would help connect Syracuse to the West Coast and Asia through the major hub. Now, the Department of Transportation previously approved a $480,000 grant for the Syracuse Airport to promote Allegiant Air's flights to Florida. And the Downtown Committee of Syracuse announced that for the first time, 21 restaurants will offer $10 lunch specials during Syracuse Dining Week. Now, the event started back in 2005 to get people to eat out during the frigid months. Last year saw over 45,000 people from five CNY counties. And newcomers to this year's scene include Sweet Praxis and one personal favorite, Modern Malt. But make sure not to forget old favorites like Dinosaur Barbecue. And although Dinosaur Barbecue will not be one of the restaurants participating in Dining Week, it will be closed on Monday. That's because the restaurant is renovating its kitchen. According to a spokesperson, this is the first phase of kitchen renovation, and the project will include the installation of a new floor and new equipment. The renovations are planned to be completed in about a month and a half. The Miss America Scholarship Organization supports women's education everywhere, including at SU. Citrus TV reporter Justine Murray has details on a newly crowned Miss Upstate New York, a civil and environmental engineering major. Beauty and brains are no strangers to each other. That's what senior civil and environmental engineering major Emily Mahana proved when she won Miss Upstate New York. When you think of engineering, most people think of like a, a, a middle-aged man, you know, like uh, doing, sitting at a desk doing calculations all day. And when you think of a pageant queen, you think of somebody who's like tall, skinny, blonde. Miss Upstate New York is a preliminary pageant in the Miss America organization and is Emily's ticket to compete for Miss New York this June. This is an opportunity that she does not take for granted. You learn so much about your community, you learn so much about the country, your state, um, and that it's not just about wearing a nice dress. The Miss America organization is the nation's leading provider in scholarships. It helps Emily pay for her tuition at SU's College of Engineering and Computer Science. So I did win $500 as uh, winning Miss Upstate New York, and so that is being uh, used towards my education. Scholarship, along with service, style, and success, are the four main goals of Miss America and are represented on each point of every crown. Emily uses her title to promote female engineers and encourage more women to join the practice. When I was growing up, I felt like I didn't really have a female role model to look up to in these fields. And I think if I had had that opportunity, I might have started pursuing my uh, career plans sooner. Being Miss Upstate New York allows Emily to become the female role model she never had and to further inspire young women to follow their career ambitions. Justine Murray, Citrus TV News. Emily Mahana won her very first pageant and she will compete for Miss America if she wins Miss New York this June. New York State Police and local law enforcement agencies are cracking down on reckless driving during the Super Bowl. Governor Andrew Cuomo announced today that the Stop DWI campaign will include underage drinking enforcements, increased patrols, and sobriety checkpoints throughout the state. Last year's Super Bowl saw over 100 arrests for drunk driving and more than 4,000 total tickets. Cuomo aims to reduce this through the new initiative funded by the Governor's Traffic Safety Commission. Governor Cuomo is also looking to garner New York support for Puerto Rico. This Saturday at 10 a.m., a rally will be held to call on the federal government to continue disaster relief efforts for the country. The rally will be held in the Bronx, but you will be able to attend virtually at the Nancy Cantor Warehouse building on Fayette Street here in Syracuse. And Puerto Rico is still recovering from damage caused by Hurricanes Maria and Irma over four months ago.
And coming up, Cape Town in South Africa is experiencing the worst drought on record. Find out how residents in the city are trying to address the water shortage. And Larry Nasser is back in court today, this time to face 65 more victims in Michigan. More details after the break. I see you mobbing over her. Let's go. Let's mob. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey yo, we mobbing. Come on, girl. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey yo, let's crawl. Boom. Hey yo, let's crawl. Boom. Hey, let's crawl. Hey yo, let's crawl. Boom. When I was in foster care, I never knew when I would have to move. So I always had my suitcase ready to go. Then one day, I was adopted. My new parents opened their hearts and home to me. My parents cook my favorite breakfast for me every morning. My parents take me on trips I never thought I would go on. They gave me a home and an even better reason to use that suitcase. My parents aren't perfect, but they're perfect for me. Got a quarter? If you see news happening on campus, in Syracuse, or across the nation, call the Citrus TV Newsroom, 315-443-1177, or tweet at Citrus TV News, your campus news leader. The controversial Nunes memo was authorized for release by Donald Trump this morning. It alleges that the FBI abused its surveillance authority when it obtained a FISA warrant to monitor a Trump foreign policy advisor. The memo claims that in order to obtain the warrant, information from the Clinton dossier was used in the application. Now, according to the memo, the application for the FISA warrant did not reference the role of the Clinton campaign in funding the Trump dossier, and the release came against strong objections from the Intelligence Committee, who says the memo mischaracterizes classified information. But I think it's a disgrace what's happening in our country. And when you look at that, and you see that and so many other things, what's going on. Uh, a lot of people should be ashamed of themselves and much worse than that. Disgraced Dr. Larry Nasser returned to court this morning in Michigan. The ex-gymnastic doctor is now facing another charge, the molestation of gymnasts at a Michigan club. A father of three of the victims attacked Nasser today in the courtroom and he was later escorted out of the courtroom by police. The Super Bowl is right around the corner Come on, Jordan, and isn't the fans around the world. That means going to great lengths to catch the big game. And Citrus TV reporter Elijah Shama checked out how fans watch the matchup from the Middle East. Amman Jordan isn't the first name that comes to mind when you think of a football city. But for students studying abroad like Matt Hamzi, finding a place playing the Super Bowl on Sunday was the only option, no matter the challenge. So it's a little tough. Uh, I actually went to three different restaurants to try and find the game, and all of them looked at me like I was crazy American, and why would I watch you know, the not real football? Um, but I finally found one, um, so it was a little bit of a search, but you just find the American restaurants, you know, the wings and rings, and you know, make it work. That restaurant, Buffalo Wings and Rings, has been playing the Super Bowl across Jordan for eight years now. The president of Buffalo Wings and Rings, Hytham David, a huge football fan himself, wanted a place for people to be able to come and see the games in Amman. After getting permission from the Ministry of Tourism to stay open late, a tradition was born. And it started from one or two people to three or four people to where every Sunday is, is a pretty nice crowd of Arab Americans and expats and some military and embassy employees that all come by and we enjoy the game together and it was natural to have a big party for the Super Bowl. 
Daniel Katab, who moved to Oman five years ago from Philadelphia, is one of those Arab Americans. He loves being able to watch the Super Bowl with other people, no matter how late he has to stay up. Well, when you're watching a game that starts at 1.30 in the morning, everything is dead. So the fact that there's a full party going on inside the restaurant and everyone is yelling and screaming at 3 o'clock in the morning is great. I mean, it's exactly, my brother is actually uh, in Jerusalem. He's coming across just to watch the game with us because it's, it's fun to watch it with other people. So come Sunday night at 1.30 in the morning, this place is going to be a mix of embassy officials, Jordanians trying to experience American cultures, and students trying to catch the big game. Reporting from Amman, Jordan, I'm Elijah Shama, Citrus TV News. Well, thanks so much, Elijah. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, and you know it's even cooler seeing a Philly fan all across the world. And of course, not my Jets, but that's all right. It's okay. There's a time for everyone. <laughs> and clumps of oil are washing up on the shores of Japan, and some fear the source is the Iranian tanker that sunk in the East China Sea last month. The tanker was carrying one million barrels of crude oil and represents the worst disaster of its kind in decades. The Japanese government has set up a special unit to help respond to the crisis. According to a leaked Pentagon report, Russia is developing new nuclear weapons. More specifically, Russia is allegedly working on building, get this, an undersea autonomous torpedo. And some analysts have called this a doomsday weapon. The U.S. is saying they do have credible deterrent against a potential Russian threat. And the terrorist who drove his car through a crowd of worshippers at a London mosque was sentenced today to a minimum of 43 years in prison. The attack killed one man and injured 12 others. The judge told the attacker, quote, your mindset became one of malevolent hatred. This was a terrorist attack you intended to kill. The attacker will serve a life sentence with no chance of parole for 43 years. Don't go anywhere because coming up, weather anchor Josh Feinblatt will be back with his full weather forecast. Keep it here. I see you mobbing over her. Let's go. Let's mob. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, we mobbing. Come on, girl. Let's crawl. Mm -hmm. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Hey, let's crawl. Hey, yo, let's crawl. Hey, look, it's those guys. Uh, Are you good to drive? I'm fine. How many did you have? I should be fine. You should be? Go and step out of the vehicle for me. See ya, buddy. Good luck. So it turns out, buzz driving and drunk driving, they're the same thing. And it costs around $10,000. So not worth it. Everybody has a dream. Mine was to see the ocean. And with a little help, I made it. In the Citrus TV Weather Center, this is SU's most accurate weather forecast. Welcome back to Citrus TV News and happy Groundhog's Day. If you missed it earlier in the show, we told you what Poxatawney Phil uh, saw and what, what did he see? It was his shadow. So you guys know what that means, unfortunately, or fortunately, if you, you love it up here with the snow, six more weeks of winter. So thank you, Poxatawney Phil. If you're going out tonight, Here's the temperatures. It's going to stay around 12 degrees. Going to dip into the early morning to around 10 and then later back up to around 11. That's pretty much where it will stay for the rest of the night. I recommend boots and a heavy coat. We have a lot of slush outside, um, but that's what going out tonight. And if you're going out tonight and you don't want to walk, ride shares. It's a great idea, but it can get a little bit expensive. So. It's going to be a little bit high the surge night, at least what I'm predicting, because of those snowy and windy conditions, the slushy roads, and because rush is still happening. That's why I said it's not very high, but still high prices going to be uh, tonight on 
the ride share. And how do we get here with this wintry slushy mix? Well, it moved in in the past couple days, a little bit of rain, mostly snow, and then some high temperatures, let it melt a little, but then dropped suddenly to make it that slushy mix that we're seeing with a lot of foot traffic on campus. And tomorrow and Wednesday, uh, tomorrow moving into the weekend, into later in the week, we'll talk about our five day forecast, but just all this snow mix coming in, we are going to be seeing a lot of snow to come. Don't worry, but this weekend, it's not going to be too bad. Uh, tomorrow, it's going to be actually pretty nice compared to today. It's not gonna feel like negative two degrees. It's going to feel like, I don't know, around five degrees, maybe up to around 15 degrees later in the day, but those temperatures are going to be in the low 20s. And tomorrow, big game day against Virginia. Tip-off at four, Zach's got that later in the show. But uh, 4 p.m. tip-off, it's going to be around 26 degrees, no precipitation. So that's pretty nice. Around the area today, the temperatures were pretty, 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 pretty even with Syracuse, you know, nice and moving into our five-day forecast tomorrow. 27 degrees uh, is our high, 34 into the week, and it, those temperatures are just going to sort of fluctuate for the rest of winter through the low 30s, high 20s. Thanks for the mention, Josh. Coming up on sports, women's basketball, men's basketball, and Big baller basketball? The men take on number two Virginia in the Dome tomorrow. And of course, it's Super Bowl weekend. We'll be right back. This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day I found out I have something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I found my voice and learned all the way I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. There's one thing you can never have sex without. It's not something you buy. Or something you take. In fact, there's only one way to get it. It has to be given to you, freely. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. Consent. If you don't get it, you don't get it. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Leaving hot coals improperly extinguished can cause a wildfire. Hey guys, it's smoky. It looks as if Smoky is going to use the drown, stir, drown, and feel technique. After the first drown, a good stir. Next, another drink. And finally, a close feel. Is it cool? cool? Okay. Yeah. Hey, Smokey, catch. Oh, my bad, Smokey. Only you can prevent wildfires. And now, your Citrus TV Sports Report. Welcome to sports, I'm Zach Lang. Tiana Mangakahia and company have had an interesting season thus far. After starting 11-0, the Orange have dropped five of their last 11. Currently on a three-game win streak, could Coach Q's squad right the ship in the Dome last night? And as we transfer over to the Dome, there's Otto, he's dancing. And Syracuse, they did some dancing of their own in the first half. 7.40 left in the first quarter. Amaya Finkley gets the layup, assist by Tiana Mangakahia. SU up 8-2. We go just before the half. Dignus Stratmane, the layup is good, assist again by Mangakahia. The game would be tied at 28 at half. But, but Virginia Tech, they got the last laugh. That three was good. Taylor Emery, Virginia Tech wins 73-64. And here's what Coach Q had to say after the game. We've played with a lot of confidence up, up until this point, and today we didn't we didn't we didn't, we didn't look confident, and um, we we haven't looked this way all year. Un, unsure, you know, we have eight foot shots that we're not pulling the trigger on. We got three point shots in the corner, which is the shortest three on the court that we're not taking, and that that has to be something that that I need to correct. 
and the highest player drafted in Syracuse women's program history has a shot to join the national pool. Guard Brittany Sykes of the Atlanta Dream will be attending the USA National Team training camp in South Carolina. Sykes is one of six invited players after her first year in the pros, where she led all WNBA rookies in points and rebounds per game. The minicamp starts on February 9th. And from women to men, Syracuse hosts number two Virginia in the Dome tomorrow. The Cues are coming off a poor offensive outing against Georgia Tech. The team shot a season low 30% from the field in the Peach State, almost as cold as uh, the snow they came back to. And post game, Bayheim announced that guard uh, Howard Washington will miss the rest of the year with a knee injury, so look for potential minutes from scholarship guard Braden Bayer. The Cavaliers bested the Cuse already this season in Charlottesville and are still undefeated in ACC play. Tip-off is set for 4 p.m., and you can catch all your post-game analysis in Orange, on Orange Press Pass at 8 p.m. right here on OTN. And don't worry, SU fans, Jalen Carey will still be coming to the Big Orange. The Syracuse recruit was offered a spot in LeVar Ball's Junior Basketball Association. The Big Baller creation offers young players a chance to go pro straight out of high school. Carey declined the offer and will play alongside fellow recruits Darius Baisley and Buddy Beheim next season. And the Nets, when we go to the pros, young Lakers squad in Brooklyn tonight, while the Knickerbockers will be away from the Garden. New York is coming off a 30-point loss to Boston and looks to get back in the W column in Milwaukee. Jabari Parker will be making his season debut tonight for the Bucks, and the Knicks will still be without center Joakim Noah, who is on an indefinite leave while the team is trying to ship him before the trade deadline. And of course, the big game is this weekend. Super Bowl 52 will see Philadelphia and New England square off in Minnesota for the Vince Lombardi Trophy. Both teams finished the regular season at 13-3. Patriots tight end Rob Gronkowski has been cleared to play, and kickoff is set for 6.30 on NBC. And if you're not a big sports fan, well, don't worry. Justin Timberlake and the commercials should provide you with all the entertainment you need. And, of course, we're all rooting for Philadelphia here. And if you're not, you will be. Okay, and stay with us. We'll be right here after the break. Looking for these? You drive buzzed. It could be one very expensive ride. First, you got to make bail. Then pay me to get your car back. Your insurance premiums will go through the roof. And my legal fees just keep adding up. All told, it could end up costing you $10,000. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. <clears throat> hey, Hard, what's this? That's my resignation letter. You're resigning? Why? Because you're constantly ignoring me. You're half as active as you used to be, and you read stuff like this. You've been putting me under a lot of pressure lately. That's why I'm ready to quit. I, I forgot. I'll, I'll do better. Please, don't quit on me. OK. But remember, it's not what you say, it's what you do. Listen to your heart. Don't let it quit on you. Let's go for a walk. Uncontrolled high blood pressure could lead to a stroke, heart attack, or death. Get yours to a healthy range before it's too late. Here we go. Here we go. We're going to go out there in the rain. You're going to get wet. All right, here we go. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay, quick. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yes. So much fun. Welcome back to Citrus TV News Now. You may have noticed our red today. Nicole's a little more vibrant than me. <laughs> today is actually National Wear Red Day to raise awareness for women's heart health. And this is the 15th annual Wear Red Day. As you see, we sported it, Greg sported it earlier, and heart disease remains the number one killer of women. It's definitely a good thing to wear red and I'm raise I'm just awareness. glad I could help the cause. Well, thank you for helping. For uh, all absolutely, us out there. anytime, <laughs> anytime. And that's all the time we have tonight for Citrus TV News. I'm Noah Eagle. And I'm Nicole Dementry. Have a great night, Syracuse.